Let's talk about accountability. Well, artistic accountability. I'm not here to spill any tea or anything. Oh my God, put the tea in accountability. Okay, anyway, as an artist, especially in this day and age where being an artist is so unrewarding, motivation and accountability is a tough one. It's super easy to keep painting when there is an incentive for it. If you do commissions, it's easy to find the motivation to paint as soon as that deposit hits your PayPal. But how do you keep it up, so to speak, when your PayPal becomes as dry as your DMs? Today, I want to share with you some tips on how you can stay motivated and keep painting even when there is no physical incentive to do it. And since a bunch of you seem to enjoy last week's format, today's video is going to be a weird and wonderful tips type of video as well. Should I make this a series? I honestly have some really ridiculous tips on how to hack the artist's life. So if that's something you're interested in, comment below and I'll make a series out of this. If you enjoyed this video and learned something today, please remember to like and subscribe and come say hi on social media. All the links are down below. But yeah, without much further ado, here are five weird and wonderful tips on how to stay accountable as an artist. Just like with last week's video topic, there are loads of videos already on YouTube about how to stay accountable. And while those may work for most people, the fact that you're here means they probably haven't worked for you. So today I want to tell you about some really wild out there tips that will help you stay accountable as an artist, but I need you to have an open mind, okay? Also, we're in the final stretch with this painting, so today we're going to finish it up together. My very first tip is to force yourself into an uncomfortable situation. By this, I mean going to an unfamiliar place, making friends with people you wouldn't usually reach out to, or simply just trying an activity that you've never done before. A lot of times, our creative brain will protest hardest when it's trapped in a constant, repetitive, and entirely too familiar routine. Creativity requires new information. Think of it like a fire. When you want to keep the fire going, you have to add more wood or fuel to it, or it will gradually dwindle and snuff itself out. As artists, it is sometimes easy to forget that new creative input doesn't just come from Pinterest and ArtStation, because if that's all we were meant to look through, we would literally be AI. But our creativity, the real stuff, that comes from the very human aspects of our lives. And so in order to keep our creative pool well stocked, we need new experiences. Now look, I get it. You don't want to leave the house. That's fine. I don't either. The point is to literally just do something you wouldn't usually do, at least to begin with. Start small. That's the key. But don't then stay small. So if you pick up a new skill, don't just do it once, but actually try to get better at it. You'll find that the more you engage in the unfamiliar, the more your mind starts to expand. And then maybe one day you'll take a trip to a different corner of the earth altogether, and then your imagination will really soar. In the art community, we talk a lot about feeding our visual library, and most of us assume that is simply a synonym for consuming more art. But from my experience painting for so long, I've come to understand that while consuming other art is great for our painting technique, it is consuming everything about the life that's buzzing all around us that gives our art a purpose. So try engaging with the world around you. It will give you some incredible source material. Okay, so you've heard people say that doing art challenges like the one brush challenge or the one layer challenge, or most of all prompt challenges will keep you accountable. And sure, for a time it might do, 
adding restrictions to your painting process forces you to think outside the box and engage your creativity. However, after a time, this becomes tedious and dull and can sometimes also feel a little stifling. I don't know about you, but adding restrictions to my painting process actually does the opposite for me and makes me just not want to paint at all. That said though, we do still want to encourage that creative outside the box thinking. I found that instead of restricting the tools or painting techniques, it actually works a lot better to restrict your painting time. I'm not talking about like five minute drawing challenges or anything like that. Think bigger. For a whole six days in the week, don't let yourself draw, paint or even doodle. If art ideas come to you, you can put them down in words, but do not ponder it any further. Just simply refuse to let your mind engage with art ideas or activities. Just let the desire to paint brew and bubble inside of you for a whole six days. And then on the seventh day of the week, give yourself an hour, a few hours, or maybe even the entire day to do nothing but draw and paint. Do this for a couple of weeks and I promise you, your mind is going to be chomping at the bit to run out and paint real quick. Once you find yourself being more and more inspired, you could add in extra art days, but the point is that you do not let yourself even think about painting for too long on non-art days. One thing to remember though is you can always go back to one day or a few hours a week when you start to feel art block approaching, or even extend the time to once in two weeks. One frequency of art days is not better or worse than the other, it's just a sliding scale of what works best for you right now. I think I've mentioned this on an older video, but my absolute 100% most loved technique to getting accountable with art is to delude myself. Just straight up lie to yourself, make up an incredible thing that will happen if you paint right now. Wait, don't do this if you have a compulsion disorder like OCD, because this will make it worse. Skip this next bit and go to tip number four, please. Okay, for my non-compulsive folks, here's the thing. We lie to ourselves all the time. We tell ourselves things like, oh, I look awful today, or oh, we've never met, but he for sure loves me, or maybe I'm just unlucky and God hates me. Obviously all lies, but we delude ourselves into fully believing these things anyway. So it's actually a really easy habit to turn productive. Just make up something absolutely wonderful that you want to see happen and convince yourself that it will actually happen if you draw right now. It doesn't even have to be linked to your actual art. Here are some lies I've told myself that have absolutely worked. If I draw today, the weather will turn really pleasant and I won't be a puddle of sweat. If I paint this week, my pothos plant will put out three new leaves. If I finish up this character design today, I'll find a really good discount on that makeup that I want. None of this makes logical sense, but I just wanted these things so much that I was willing to do what it takes just in case it actually worked. But then again, I'm like level six gullible, so that could also be a big reason why this works. <laughs> Eventually, you'll get so good at this, you won't even have to think too hard about it. And hey, as a nice bonus, if any of this does come true, you've just discovered that you're a witch. And if that happens, DM me on Instagram, I need some witchcraft for real. <laughs> So, um, you're probably gonna hate this one, but I need you to give it a try anyway because it does work. If you find that art feels like an extremely boring prospect at the moment, the best way to deal with this is to upstage it by doing something even more boring. Oh yeah, those dishes that you've been procrastinating doing, go do them. All those clothes that have come out of the dryer, go fold them and put them away. Read that textbook, respond to those emails, do all of that boring stuff. This is what I call the infinite procrastination hack. 
You just set up a list of things that you've been procrastinating, get started on any one, and then when that becomes boring and tedious, move to the next thing on your list and keep it going until you've had enough of chores. And then, oh, then art will suddenly seem just so appealing, you'll wonder why you ever thought to give up on it. As you may have noticed, I am the kind of person who likes to look at my weaknesses and see how I can make use of them. And though I'm not someone who procrastinates too, too often, this was actually a really fun hack that got me through my final year thesis back in university. And I can assure you, painting is significantly more fun than writing 30 pages about the neuroprotective effects of xenon administration on anesthesia-induced baby brains. The point is, after I'd vacuumed the carpet, organized my wardrobe, taken the bins out, meal prepped, and done laundry, writing that thesis felt like a blessing I was eternally grateful for. <laughs> the point is to procrastinate by doing all the stuff that you want to procrastinate. Try switching to the infinite procrastination hack, and I promise you will appreciate the ability to paint a lot more. I saved this tip for the very end because it is not a quick fix and will take you a while, but when it works, it will change your life forever. Build a relationship of complete and utter trust with yourself. I'm really not trying to be philosophical or wax poetic here, but being able to trust yourself is actually incredibly important to staying consistent. Why? Because you're gonna need to be able to promise yourself things and know that you will keep said promises. You need to know with the utmost certainty that when you say you will paint, you will absolutely paint, no excuses. But getting to that point is probably the hardest thing you'll do because our whole lives we are told that we simply can't trust ourselves. We need rules and laws because as individuals we are fully incapable of doing the right thing. And as a result, we end up just fully discarding the very concept of building a relationship of trust and understanding with our own selves. So then, is it any surprise at all that we simply can't hold ourselves accountable? It's simply not possible to build a perfect relationship with yourself overnight. So just as with everything else, the key is to start small. This might seem silly, but if there's something you already want and are going to do, first take a second to promise yourself you'll do it. Make it as ceremonious and dramatic as you like. Put it on your to-do list. And then when you've done it, remind yourself that you've just kept a promise to yourself and take that off your to-do list. Do this even if you've already done the thing. Pretend you haven't and then take it off your to-do list and then tell yourself you've done something that you promised you would. Eventually, you can do this with the things that you do anyway, whether you like them or not. And then you'll get to the point where simply making a promise to yourself is more than enough to get you doing the things that you absolutely hate doing. So when it comes to keeping yourself accountable as an artist, the goal is to get to the point where just telling yourself to paint is more than enough to get you painting. Like with the Zodiac series where I procrastinated up until late last year before I got back into it. And what do you know, there's only three more to go because your girl finally finished the piece. Here is Sagittarius, the adventurers. So which of these tips do you think you'll be integrating in your own artistic process? Are there any other weird tips and tricks that have helped you stay accountable to your art? Let me know in the comments below because I'm really curious to hear from you. Also, should I do a weird and wonderful tips series about like all the different aspects of being an artist? Drop that in the comments below as well because I've got a ton of these to share. 
<laughs> of course, if you've enjoyed this video and learned something today, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and maybe share this with an art friend who needs a push as well. Um, make sure you subscribe to my channel because I post art content every single week. Um, you can check out all of my actual art itself on my Instagram, link is down below. And also come join the chat on my Discord server. Link to that is also down below. If you'd like to grab even more exclusive rewards, look at all the speed paints from start to finish, all the progress steps, as well as grab my brush kit for Photoshop and Krita. It is all up on my Patreon and the tiers only start at a dollar a month for most rewards. So if that's something you're interested in, I will leave a link to my Patreon up here in the cards and down in the description. And I thank you so much for checking it out. But that's about everything for this video. So thank you guys so, so much for hanging out with me. I really hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. If you're looking for some weird and wonderful tips on how you can find your unique art style, you will really enjoy last week's video in case you haven't checked that out. I'll leave it down here in the outro. Make sure you go watch that and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.